Good morning. Good morning. Beth Gordon for Mr. Rojas, the appellant. Um, I'd like to start out by briefly reading the very limited Ms. Testimony. Gordon, before you get yes. rolling, you want sure. to reserve any time for rebuttal? Yes, thank you for asking. Mm -hmm. Four minutes would be fine. Thank sure. you. I'd like to just state that the, the bar is extremely low already for plaintiffs in personal injury cases uh, proving up their bills. You don't have to bring in a doctor. You don't have to go through a litany of things. You just have to say, yes, that's my bill. Uh, I remember getting it. You might want to throw in, I stayed there for a week. That's why it's $50,000. But that wasn't done here. And I'd like to just briefly read the very brief testimony that carried the day in this court. Um, for the $59,000 surgical bill, question, has Dr. Gomez ever sent you a bill? Answer, no. From what I know, uh, I don't have any bill yet. Not that he has sent me. God admitted. Okay. Um, next question. Do you know what he did to justify a $59,000 surgical bill? Now, this is on cross. Answer. He did the surgery. Okay. As to the $80,000 bill from Columbia Hospital, $80,000, quite a large bill. Did you question? Do you ever receive a bill from Columbia Hospital for the treatment you received? Answer. From what I recall right now, I don't know. I couldn't say. I think so, but I wouldn't be able to say. The jury had to say. They were called by the county. They had to reach a verdict. They had to draw conclusions that, that where nothing was proven to them. Um, but there's other testimony. Uh, there's other testimony by by the plaintiff in this concerning concerning fees and bills. Were you seen at the emergency room? Yes. What mm -hmm. did they do there? They took X-rays of my back, my neck, my chest. They took X-rays. Right. And they washed off my face. The next day, I went to a chiropractor, uh, Dr. Uh, Carante, or whatever his name is. Um, then it goes on. Uh, mainly my back, my neck, my right arm the day before the accident. Did you have any injuries after the accident? My neck, my back. He goes into the injuries. Then he talks about seeing Dr. Quintana, physical therapy. How long did you see Dr. Quintana? I was there for 10 months. Did you ever have any MRIs of your back? He says he had. MRIs. He had a herniated disc. Uh, I mean, it goes on page after page. He talks about the surgery, what they did for the surgery. They opened him up. It was a frontal, frontal uh, repair of the herniated disc because well, they I went in through this way, moved the organs aside. He was in the hospital for three days. He named the surgeons. Isn't that sufficient? Well, with all due respect to, to the court, um, I think the court Whenever is... Whenever you start with all due respect, yes, you don't that agree is a terrible with me. Thing to say <laughs> well, I, I believe that is why I focused on the $139,000 bill for the surgery and for the Columbia Hospital stay. Um, but Mr. Weiss that, was very clear. I'm sorry. But doesn't that, I'm sorry. But doesn't that arrive then? Don't we have an issue now with the testimony that was here? And there's some other testimony that I marked going through it. He he's, uh, talks about a surgeon's bill. Uh, he had two surgeons, Dr. Gomez and Dr. Vasquez. Dr. Vasquez opened up my stomach and opened up the space in between my organs so that uh, Dr. Gomez could come in and apply the pins and, and plates. Yes. Uh, then he goes on and talks more about MRIs. I mean, isn't that enough for this to go to the jury, for the jury to make a determination? The question is, is it reasonable? Were these bills reasonable? Were yes, they reasonable? Sir. And in fact, were they incurred? Isn't that enough to go to the jury? For no. the jury to make a determination, and if so, why not? That's why the defense counsel said, I agree to send the Jackson bills, the chiropractic bills, but I don't agree that the surgical bills and the Columbia Hospital bills should go because, first of all, even um, your honor is saying, well, that was an anterior, they went in this way. Where in the testimony does the plaintiff say? He just said he had surgery. He had surgery, but he doesn't say on a disc. Are you, is, it, is it your position that he needed to be told, can you lift your shirt so that everyone can see your scar? They did see the scar. That was okay. not objected well, to. Well, so then but, how is that? What, so is it the presumption is that that was incurred some other, some other fashion other than the surgery that he just testified to? Well, that, this would be the first time where a jury would have to simply assume that it was on the discs, the surgery was on the discs. No, no, I, I, think, I think another way of asking the question is, What's your reasonable alternative hypothesis here? You know, I didn't see any slashing cross-examination that said, 
Well, weren't some of these surgery bills connected to the earlier accident or to the repair of some other condition? So what are you positing in terms of the inferences from all that testimony about the surgery? Are you thinking that it's connected to some other injury or illness? Well, there was testimony, I believe, that there was a previous accident. A prior accident. A prior accident, <laughs> but it is up to the plaintiff to create a prima facie case. And by saying, um, you know, here's an $80,000 bill I've never seen before till today. I don't know if that's it or not. I think that's it. Yeah, but, um, but the Supreme Court has specifically mm -hmm. said expert medical testimony is not required in right. order to admit medical bills into evidence. Right. And here you have the plaintiff testify uh, in, in great length as to the fact that he had a surgery performed on him. He showed the scar that I assume was as a direct result of, can you please show the jury your scar? as a result of the surgery, and he lifts his shirt. So again, tell me, what more is he supposed to do? He is supposed to say, well, guess what? I had this surgery because of my back problem caused by the accident, and by the way, they operated on my discs. They did something but to my say, discs. He says he operated. They, they put in plates and pins. Right. They went through the front. They went to the disc. They put in plates and pins for a herniated disc. So he did have the surgery. Right. Uh, and he did testify to the two doctors who did it, that he was in the hospital for three or four days, that no. he had MRIs. Uh, yeah, he did testify he was in the hospital three for three or four days. days. I, I must be mistaken. Yeah, he did. And yeah. that he had MRIs, at least in the portion of the transcripts we were given. I, I know you relied on Albertson, and, mm -hmm. and Albertson is, is a good case, except the problem with Albertson compared to your case mm -hmm. is that in Albertson there was, there was conflicting evidence from physicians as to whether these bills were incurred. We don't have that here. The only testimony we have, at least from the transcripts that we have, is this gentleman testifying, uh, I had an accident, uh, I was diagnosed with herniated disc, I was in the hospital, I saw a chiropractor, I was operated on, they put in plates and pins, um, I was three days, I can't work, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm, give me a, a case that I can hang my hat on that says in this situation that we have here, where there was no counter evidence that that this should not have gone to the jury. The court has the Supreme Court has said in Garrett that you can't just say this is my medical bill and that's going to carry the day. There has to be something more. There has to be reasonableness and necessity. Right. Um, the case of Kaysen out of this court, uh, Judge Schwartz wrote the, the opinion in 1978. Right. Um, he stressed the fact that. In order to show reasonableness, you can simply say, well, there's the $80,000 bill, which I paid. And that carries the day. The second DCA was faced with a different situation in Easton. And they said, well, you know what? We don't think that the case and decision is really that important because, gosh, not everyone can afford to pay the bills. Well, so doctor, do uh, doctor, mm -hmm. Judge Schwartz's case, um, uh, Judge Schwartz's case, if I remember right, and I was just looking for it because I had pulled it, um, in, was a different situation than we have here. But Canseco out of this court, we talked specifically about, uh, we reject the contention that it's necessary to introduce expert testimony as a precondition. In other cases out of the first and second, uh, all you had to do was have a description of what was done and connected up with the bills, and then it was up to the jury to make a reasonable determination or to determine whether or not the bills were reasonable. So I, I, I'm, still, I'm still drawing uh, a problem here that I don't have a case I can hang my hat on. Um, well, Your Honor, again, with all due respect, <laughs> um, I'm trying here. Uh, and you're doing a be, good job. Thank you. This will be the first time that a plaintiff is able to sustain a verdict where they haven't testified either that that's the price, I can't afford it, I haven't paid it, I either had the surgery, I didn't have the surgery, it was recommended, but I, I, you know, I can't afford it, or that I have paid it, and that has carried the day on the reasonableness and necessity. This is the first time where a plaintiff hasn't done either of those things. I mean, you know, you he didn't even a, know the can price. Can you point me to a case that says it's necessary for the plaintiffs to state that he either cannot afford to pay the bill or he's paid the bills 
incurred mm-hmm. for this surgery? What case, what case can you point me to? There is a case out of the second district. I believe it's Easton versus Bradford. Yeah, and, Easton um, versus Bradford. Yes. Okay, yeah, it's out of the second. The second district. And um, they, they comment on Judge Schwartz's opinion in case, and say, well, we're going to create an exception to that. We don't agree that you have to testify that you paid for it, but it's, it's enough here for him to say, well, look, I can't afford that. It's been recommended to me. And that's the price. And that's what it's for, and I can't afford it, so therefore I haven't but, paid it. But really, the holding, the holding in Easton um, is, is really that the, the, the plaintiff testified and his treating physician, uh, that he testified that his treating re- physician referred him to another physician for physiotherapy, and he gave it a description of the treatment, and the court said that was sufficient. That's really the holding in that case. Well, I think the court stated that the appellee testified repeatedly that he was unable to afford various medical procedures but that's not the recommended. Holding. That's not the holding of the case. The holding of the case is that he testified as to that. So do you have another case that says, if you can point me to a case that says, you know, if you don't, if, if, if the plaintiff doesn't testify to one of these two things, therefore he, and there's no expert testimony. Therefore, you, you, you haven't proved that your bills are reasonable and necessary enough to get them to the jury for a jury to make a determination. Well, it's sort of, I can kind of invert that word. Okay. There, there is no case that says specifically, specifically that. that. However, there is no case with these facts. Gotcha. And this is the first time that I have found, and I've looked extensively, <laughs> I cannot find a case where a plaintiff in a personal injury case has done so little to submit these bills, and you know, where they actually sit there and say, I don't know, is that the bill? I've never seen it before till today. Right. And I don't know, is that it? Uh, is 80,000 sounds right? He actually said, under questioning from his own attorney, how much are the total bills? He said $200,000. And then uh, admitted later under cross examination, it was 155 or, or in change. Counsel, we've taken you over. Uh, I'll let you have a couple of minutes for rebuttal, though. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. Counsel? Thank you, Your Honors. Good morning. Jonathan Mann from Law Offices of Robin Bresky on behalf of the appellee, Luis Aristizabal. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Briefly, I'd like to to first address the fact that I think there's an Applegate issue um, in this case and that it's not merely academic. Um, Both in the Garrett Supreme Court case that uh, opposing counsel mentioned and that's discussed in the party's briefs, and in a case called AJ versus State from the fourth DCA, the the courts um, articulated the standard as, quote, when a plaintiff testifies as to the amount of his or her medical bills and introduces such bills into evidence, it becomes a question for the jury to decide under proper instructions whether these bills represented reasonable and necessary medical expenses. And the reason that I bring that up is because we essentially have an incomplete record in this case and that we don't have opening and closing uh, statements and the judge's jury instructions. I think the court's aware that as to the merits, my position is that Mr. Aristizabal's testimony was more than sufficient to meet the standard. But I would like to be able to argue that even if it was borderline, the judge's jury instruction adequately cured any problems here, and I can't make that argument due to the lack of a transcript. Well, we don't know that, right, because there's no transcript. Right, Your Honor. We but don't, based we don't. on the transcript portions that we do have, what would your argument be? I think the, the, it's telling that the appellant can't, cannot really articulate a, a standard. Um, we know from the, the Supreme Court's holding, in, the Florida Supreme Court's holding in Garrett that the plain, a plaintiff's testimony relating to the, expense, the expenses to the accident and the injuries related to the accident is sufficient and that expert medical testimony is not necessary. Um, and that it, it shifts the burden at that point for the other side to question the reasonableness or the necessity or the proximate causation. Yes, Your Honor. That the court, as the court knows, plaintiffs are going to come in all from all backgrounds, uh, this particular plaintiff testified through an interpreter. Not all plaintiffs will be articulate or, or particularly intelligent. I think that it would be a slippery slope to begin holding plaintiffs to a standard whereby they have to uh, testify with a, a high degree of, of medical you know, uh, detail and technicality as to what, what treatments they underwent. In this case, um, 
Well, you know, the, the burden really is, is just that the plaintiff testify regarding his injuries and, and link those medical procedures to the bills. And we submit under, under Garnett, Easton, and Albertson, um, the cases that, are, that the court's aware of that have been discussed, that Mr. Aristizabal's testimony did that. Um, in the answer brief, I tried to, to do an, an adequate job of identifying in the transcript where Mr. Aristizabal testified you know, in detail, in sufficient detail about his injuries. Um, and about the treatments, and importantly, he said, you know, these herniated discs, they were not there before this accident. Uh, they were revealed by the MRI that he, he underwent about four months after he began treatment with the chiropractor. And then he had the surgery, and he testified to a layman's understanding, um, as the court already mentioned, as, as to what happened in that surgery, that there was an incision made by one surgeon, they moved his organs to the side, and the other surgeon, you know, implanted these discs, and, or excuse me, these pins and plates into his back. Um, as to, the, as to the Albertsons case, I think it, it's, a, it's illustrative of, of the point here. In, in Albertsons, the second DCA had held that the plaintiff's testimony was, uh, excuse me, was not sufficient because there was not that link, um, that he had not associated the bills with the injuries from the accident, and the court specifically distinguished Garrett and Easton. Now, I think that this case is much more similar to Garrett and to the Easton uh, cases where there was sufficient testimony to, to link the, the injury and the bills from the, from the injury to the accident. Um, the plaintiff identified as best he could his bills and that it was then a question or then it was then up to opposing counsel to cross-examine regarding um, whether those were reasonable and necessary and, and submit it to the jury and that that's essentially what happened here. Um, if there's no other questions from the panel, um, I will respectfully urge an affirmance in this case and um, also urge affirmance of the attorney's fee award dependent on the, on the verdict. Thank you. Thank you, counsel. Thank you. Ms. Gordon, a couple of minutes. Yes. Um, very briefly, as to the Applegate issue, I mean, the directions to clerk should have been answered in, in 10 days with a cross direction to clerk, which was not done. So certainly, you know, the whole transcript could have been purchased and taxed later, so I don't think that's an issue here today. But you're relying on the portions of the transcript that we sure. have here today. Sure. Okay. And in, in, in all honesty, we, what we thought was necessary, not mm -hmm. what we wanted to show the court and hide the rest of it. Um, the problem here is that this, this really does lower the bar for present, presentation of evidence to the jury because, you know, we assume a lot of things that the law doesn't allow in a courtroom. We're assuming that the plates, I mean, it, does, it sounds ridiculous, but there was no testimony that the plates were applied to any specific part of the body. Okay? No, 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 no. You can't, you can't do that. I mean, uh, you, can't, you can't expect him. It, it, he, he comes in and he says, I had herniated disc. They performed surgery. They cut me open uh, frontally or, or on my chest. They go in, they move the organs mm -hmm. aside, they put in pins and plates because I have herniated disc. What more do you want on that? Well, do you want the, him to specify it was T1, T2, S3, S4? I mean, you want him to testify. What I'm hearing you uh, articulate to this court is you, in essence, want him to articulate how the surgery transpired, so you want him to be alert for his surgery. No. I mean, and, I, and that to articulate, yes, at this moment they cut me open, and then I felt them move my organs, and then I felt them, I mean. That, as a matter of fact, I thought that was a little flippant by Mr. Weiss, and I, I will, he can read this, and that's, that's fine. <laughs> but, but I don't think that that was appropriate. What I think should have been done was present, presenting the bill to the jury, yes, that's my bill. I mean, that, that's at the very least that courts require. There has never been a case in the state of Florida where somebody hasn't said, yes, that's my bill. I mean, why don't we just say, well, let's just have lawyers give the bills to the jury, because that's what this case represents. Well, many times people just stipulate to the bills they go into evidence, and then you have an argument over it's reasonable, related, or necessary. Am I correct? Well, yeah, I believe you there was a stipulation that. as to the Jackson bill. Pills. There was in a stipulation as to Jackson. Because right. it was related, and it was right after. There was a question. I mean, obviously, the defense could have brought in more evidence, and they could have done better cross-examination, but the prima facie case was not made just, here. Just so I understand, your position is what would have been necessary here, what is necessary, is that not only does the, if they're going to do it this way, 
without an expert coming in, the doctor saying that's mm -hmm. my bill, et cetera, sure. is the plaintiff has to come in and testify uh, not only as to what was done, yes, but also say, and this is the bill for it. I received this bill. Right, and it's, it's okay. really actually very simple. Okay. I've never seen a case like this, and this is a complete failure of evidence um, as to the bills. Gotcha. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you both. Thank you.